All right, guys. Welcome back to a new episode of the Grand Prairie PD Podcast. I'm finally back with no, Katie. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. Like we've uh, been doing some with Joe. Did one with uh, with Emily recently. Yeah, they're all like, going to come out in different orders, I'm sure. But we've been on vacation. Yeah, it's been good to. No, you haven't. <laughs> You've been working. <laughs> you were not working overtime while I'm in here doing this. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're here today with uh, Officer Jazz. Yep. Right. Yep. And uh, he's uh, one of our California laterals. Sure, so we, we were just giving him a hard time about not being able to drive, driving up home prices. <laughs> He's complaining about his friends doing it to him now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But I uh, appreciate you sitting down with us, man. I know Definitely. it's uh, probably a little little weird coming to, into a new place and sticking a microphone in your face and saying, hey, let's, let's Talk chat. Talk to me. Yeah. Uh, is this something that's new to you, or you do anything like that over in, uh, in Cali? Oh, no. no nothing no. like that. Fly, fly low, not let anybody yeah. see me. That's what it's about, man. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, early life, how you got started in, in this fine job? Well, I'm originally from, I grew up in Huntington Beach, California, so okay. Surf City, USA. I uh, went to the high school there, uh, grew up in the area, and then... Now, just for my sake and anybody else, when we were talking a minute ago, you differentiated, hey, I'm from, or from Orange Beach or Huntington Beach or whatever. From Orange County, yeah. Right, Orange County, that's what it was. Not yeah, from so LA County, LA. Me, everything in California is the same, where you've got, like, you got like some Sons of Anarchy, and then you've got uh, like surfing, and then gangs, and that's pretty much it. So I don't really know what the difference is. Between. <laughs> well, like, LA's LA. It's just crazy. Orange County, a little bit more conservative, yeah. a okay. little bit low-key. Um, it's like, you know, how you have Fort Worth, Dallas, Austin, so which San Antonio. City here is is like Huntington Beach. Beach. Yeah, it probably be like I guess Dallas, more Dallas area. Like LA would be like Austin. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, I would. No, we never move there, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, hmm. <laughs> yeah you never want to do that kind huh. of thing. So then you have like I would say your Houston is like San Francisco. Ah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how it is. We're gonna have fun with that one later. Yeah, like we like you lived in Orange County and you worked in LA. Gotcha. You never you never wanted to live there. Just schools are bad and just right. I mean in my opinion, I guess you could yeah. say. It's just a mess. Hmm. You you live oh I guess without going into too much detail, you live kinda close to, to where you work here or you still kinda no. take the same approach. Oh, as far I, li- as I live on the edge of the Metroplex. Okay. Yeah. yeah up north. So nice. everybody thinks I live really far, but I'm used to the commute from yeah. where I used to live before. I'm like that's the same thing. And at least in these ones, you have nice roads that aren't full of potholes and <laughs> right yeah. crazy traffic. And, and, and like, gas isn't uh, unless you go $7 east. a gallon. If you go east from here, it's, man, every time I have to drive that direction, I'm cussing the whole time about getting my car tore up. Well, at least in, going north, a lot of stuff's new. So mm-hmm. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm good for now. <laughs> for yeah. the next 20 years, he's good. Well, let that twenty years I should be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long did you do in, in Cali? I did six. I okay. six LAPD, and then I've done two here so far. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. That, that's it's crazy how much this place has changed because you've been here two years. I don't think we've ever run into each other. No. Um, been a night say the whole time. I mean, that's right. And see, and that's the shift. That's my favorite shift. The one I like to try to help out the most. And I still haven't. Yeah. It's weird. When I first got here, I was I was I probably told this before, but I was from a bigger department. And so I, everybody be like, oh, my goodness, I had never seen you before. It's so, so ridiculous. I'm like, shut up. Like, it's, it's fine. Because where I was from, yeah. to see someone you knew, like if you go to a different station or headquarters, oh, to yeah. see someone you knew was kind of like, what are you doing here? Yeah. But like seeing someone you didn't know was normal. Well, uh, but some people are like, oh, do you know so-and-so that works at LAPD? I'm like, <laughs> the, the one out of the 10,000 people that work right, there. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Or like, oh, he worked at this station. It's like the station I worked at was the size of this department. Right. Yeah. So I mean it was self-contained and you I mean I stayed there pretty much the whole time. Right. So I'm like did they work where I work? Like no. I'm like I, I'll ne- no for so no you, idea. You have to learn how to just go with it. Be like, "Yeah, I saw him a few days ago, man. Have a good day." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, but here uh quickly I got used to just you kind of get to know a, a lot of people, but then mm-hmm. once I went upstairs and I've kind of disconnected, I don't really get to besides like Seeing uh, reports and whatnot, I don't get to. to really yeah, that's, get to all, guys. that's all we are. Yeah, oh, I, I've seen one of your reports. That's who you are. Yeah, yeah. Pr- well, <laughs> yeah. Reports and reports and body cam. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Um, yeah, because when people ask, "Oh, I know this guy in, in in GP," you know him, and it's like, I, no. But it's like I think back to like body cam. I've watched some of the questions that were asked. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know him either. Hmm. 
Although, in everybody's defense, though, I look back at some of the questions I used to ask and the way I did things in patrol. I'm like, God, I know the property guys were just cussing me out. Oh, and I, oh, I always reach out to them. I'm like, so I'm like, hey, if I'm doing something like where it's just annoying you guys, let yeah. me know because I'm not going to know any different until, right. yeah. you know, you guys, you know, complain to one of your buddies and one of your buddies complains and then it gets back to me. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> just, well, tell, just me. tell me. Like, yeah. <laughs> huh? I'm happy to fix it. I'm not going to, my yeah. ego, you know, there's none there. So, well, that's the big thing, man. If if everybody had that approach, yeah, true, no issues whatsoever. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a huge. Uh, I don't think we have like an issue with it in this department necessarily, but it's just. Mm-hmm. I think male driven occupations probably it's a little oh, bit yeah. more of a problem. But yeah, if you can check your ego and kind of have that attitude, man, you're going to be able. To, there's no limits to learning yeah, you can do. You'd be fine. Oh, I mean, it, for anybody to say they know what they're doing, I mean, I kind of know what I'm doing in this job, and it's been like eight years. Yeah, kind of, kind of got like I'm a little more comfortable. Well, I think that's kind of the zone where you're. Like, right when I left patrol was when I f- felt like when I l- cleared detail and went out in the street every day, it was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm probably going to be able to figure it out. Yeah. And I oh, might yeah. even not have to make a phone call today. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, before that, it was just like, I don't know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but see, I don't know, even with the officers that tell you, oh, uh, I've been doing this for X amount of years. I know, I've seen it all. I know it all. I'm like, please stay away from me. Oh, yeah. Because you scare me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I see, I, I say that. I've seen it all in the fact that I'm not really surprised. I've been surprised here a couple That's times. That's different, yeah. And I was like, wow. Like, I thought coming here, I'm like, oh, this is just, I've seen it all, done it all. Like, I'm not going to be surprised. Yeah. And then your guys' highways, holy cow. No kidding. <laughs> there's some crazy crashes. I mean, that that's that. there's nothing like that over there. Really? I that was know. a big one for me, too, coming over. Going 100 miles crash. per hour on the wrong side of the highway and crashing into people like, what is that? Yeah. Like, how are you on the wrong side of the highway? I've never heard of that. <laughs> like, unless it's on purpose. I'm like. Uh, we're not laughing at the situation. But still, like, I, yeah. I'm like looking, like every once in a while, I can see some of these dark spaces. It's like, you know, I can see how you get messed up. I'm like, yeah. okay, how do you? Like, but for the most part, I'm like, you're driving down 30 the wrong way. Like when you see headlights, you can bet, oh, that's that's a mess up. Let me, let me. No, they just keep driving. Well, so it would it would make sense to you if you'll have like 15 beers first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drink like 15 yeah, beers. You know what? Go out there and you go, oh, I makes get sense. It. Yeah. yeah, now I understand. Yeah, that's, this that's, is where I that's what I'm highway. missing. That's what I'm missing. <laughs> you guys need to move over. Yeah, but no, the, the the highways, speed in general was a, a new thing for me when I got here mm-hmm. because for the most part, sheriffs handled our freeways mm-hmm. and uh, we couldn't chase, um, weren't supposed to chase. And um, so like the chases we get into where you're going fast or like even just running code where you're hitting the freeways to get, it's it was all new. And then the, the crashes and whatnot was. Oh, yeah, we had CHP. CHP handled a lot of the highway stuff. We really? didn't even touch it. Like we don't really go on the freeway because it's like, you got a pursuit, you get on that freeway, and you're like golden. You know, like, they're going to hit some type of traffic, especially yeah. where we're at. They go, oh, the oh, 110 right. north. <laughs> you get downtown, you're done. Yeah. And then, you know, that's where our helicopter launched from. So it's like, yeah, go ahead. That's the best route for you to take right there. Go right. straight towards where the helicopter is. And then it was just game over for them. Yeah. What was y'all's – did y'all chase very often over there, or was it kind of restrictive? Yeah, we did. I mean, it's it's pretty restrictive. Um, not too bad. It was mostly felonies. You can chase, uh, they call them DUIs, they were DWIs, and then um, stolen cars. Okay. Is, so. is running a felony over there? Yeah, in a vehicle. But we didn't do evading on foot. Oh, right. I mean, it, yeah, he didn't charge him with that. What? You ran, you ran. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Thank I you mean, for making me exercise. And a car was different, but yeah, on foot. What do you mean you didn't charge him for running on foot? It wasn't There's like no a charge. really evading on foot. There's no charge. <laughs> Take out. Just, you didn't. You didn't charge guys with that. So you gotta chase them, sweat. And they just, up yeah, they just got just, their normal charge. Yeah. yeah. What? I mean, there was a charge, but it was. It never got filed, right? Or filed. That's why LA was getting in trouble for beating. Like, oh, you're not gonna catch charges. Uh, hey, that's uh, <laughs> last the, the one time. Oh, the one. Geez. The one time I did get in trouble and got you know reprimanded was chasing after somebody on foot. Yeah, golly. Okay, wait. Why'd you get in trouble though? Oh, that's that's on, that video's on YouTube. That was a right, uh, well, give us the story. I know LAPD <laughs> critical incident when I was working. Um, I was with this you know senior officer. I mean, he's done like thirty years, and uh, he was back on patrol. Just got injured, so he's like, he's been out of the game for a while, and he's with me, and I'm like passenger, and he's figuring it out, and we got in like we call it ADW suspect, so uh, armed uh, deadly weapon. Mm-hmm. Uh, call it the Home Depot, you know, always, always a Home Depot. And so 
we get there and he spots them. And we're like, hey, let's go. Let's go get them. And so the guy kind of walks into the drive through and that guy goes through the drive through the wrong way and goes front bumper takedown and bumps the dude with the front of the, the car, knocks him on the ground. The old guy. Yeah, the suspect. Hmm. So, but the suspect jumps back up. I'm like, oh, great. And we're in the drive through going the wrong way. So I pop out and I chase him down and I'm yelling at him. We're running through like a. I think of it like an Epic West kind of parking lot, yeah. mm-hmm. dodging and weaving, hopping over carts. And I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. And then I tackled him down and I mean, it's a funny video. And so he's like, am I going to go to jail? I'm like, yeah, man. Like, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> so we hooked them all up. But since they used the car, it was considered a use of deadly force. So I got full on investigated for that and then got sent to a, it's called like Lee tack where they kind of remediate you. Yeah. Um, You're a but, passenger though, right? Yeah. What the hell did you do wrong? <laughs> Well, they didn't like that I chased him. He's supposed to be armed with a machete. So they didn't like that I chased an armed suspect. They're like, you should have just contained him. Just imagine setting up containment Epic West. I think they issue all lassos. I know, right? That would be awesome. How the hell are you going to contain somebody? Yeah, so that was like, they're like, you shouldn't do that. But the best part was that they, like, advertised me all over their social media and Facebook. Hey, stay in shape. Look at this officer. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, you can yeah. chase people. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, like, totally broadcast. And then I'm like, they're like, oh, you didn't. We didn't like that. It wasn't, like, out of policy so much. It was, they called it the bad tactics. Mm-hmm. Your tactics weren't smart. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it was whatever. Huh. It, was, it makes for a cool story. I mean, I've been on YouTube plenty of times now. That's that ridiculous. was a big one. There was even a there's even a TikTok video like remake. Um, oh man, I wish I were. I mean, have you ever heard that term? I mean, part of my French it's like fastest boy. Yes. Yeah. So they somebody <laughs> remade it with my video, and that's me running. I've and probably they, yeah. seen it. Then. <laughs> oh yeah, it was classic. That's yeah, I've always got a whole bunch of other video guys are sending me. You're on TikTok. I'm like, what's TikTok? I don't, I don't got any social media. <laughs> I'm watching the video. I'm like. Who dubbed over? I'm like, and people are like, is that you saying that? I'm like, that's not me saying that. Like, <laughs> no awesome. way. So that was that was pretty good. But yeah, I got in trouble for that one. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. But that's how the best case scenario. I didn't really get like days off work. I just got sent to a cool training where they teach you how to shoot and do all this cool stuff and walk you through you, all scenarios. You do that scenario again, you. Sh- yeah, <laughs> yeah. Saying, yeah. I don't know. You're gonna be in the same amount of trouble. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. We're so. Oh man! So what did you uh, what did you do over there? Just patrol. Okay. Just straight patrol. I uh, started out. I mean that that kind of a funny story is that when my first day of the academy in LAPD we call it Black Line Black Line Monday. Okay. You stand on Black Line in suits and you just get smoked. Right. So, but wind back 24 hours before that, my son was born. My first son. Oh yeah. wow! So I I left my wife in the hospital, oh, drove yeah. home, got my suit ready. I did like maybe four hours of restless sleep because I'm mm-hmm. leaving my brand yeah. new kid and my wife in the hospital. And I'm like, yeah. showing up to Black Line Monday. And I mean, you know, they're just yelling and screaming. And I'm like, it's, I lucked out though because they saw my little hospital bracelet because I had to claim my son and wife. Right, yeah. They go, what is that? Is that jewelry? And they're just screaming, like, drop down. And then all of a sudden, like the little DI's in the back, like, hey, that's the guy that had that super prego wife that showed up to orientation. And, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Oh, my wife, she marched down the, um, I think he was a lieutenant over, like, the recruiting slash academy. Big all, like, nine months plus, just walks up to him and says, are you going to make sure that my husband is there when my son is born, if it's during the academy? You know, she just, <laughs> what? She's, she's, he's like, yes, already. ma'am, yes, ma'am, I'll make sure he's there. She's like, okay. Like, oh, my God. Like, you know, I'm all nervous. Yeah, I need I, this you know, job. shaved head. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just don't get me in trouble. Like, I'm going to get screamed at. So they all, like, met. Like, hey, that's the guy. So they left me alone. I probably had a pretty easy black line. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not all messed up like some of these people, man. The guy showed up with sideburns down to his, like, chin. I'm like, holy cow. Like, what do you think? His defense, though, if you only watch, like, 1970s cop shows. And I mean, they spell it all out. Like, pretty much, like, they don't tell you guys to shave your head, but. It's like the easiest thing to do when if you, you, if you can't you get yelled at. Everybody else is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, limit on what you can get yelled at. That's the, the whole goal. Right. So and that that was that was always I always the people ask, oh, how long you been in those? As old as my son. Yeah. So, I mean, he's. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. So I always had that, but. Hmm. So how is she adapting now to Texas heat? Ah, it's hot. You know, <laughs> she doesn't mind it. Yeah, she doesn't mind it at all. I mean, it's just you just kind of gotta like deal with it in different ways. I mean, we're always in the pool. I live in a great community that's got a great pool situation. So yeah. I was going to say, if you're using ways, plural, so please 
elaborate because I only know it one way. <laughs> oh, I mean, just we, sweating. Yeah, well, I mean, we go to the pool a lot, um, and then we just all do all that indoor stuff, hmm. like the trampoline parks. Yeah. Um, the main event by me is yeah. pretty decent, so I yeah. take them to the arcade or go bowling. Yeah, just little things like that. Yeah, and then I mean, we get up early in the morning. And I take my son fishing. Oh, so cool. we'll go bass fishing in the morning. Very cool. Yeah, he just last day of summer caught his first bass all on his own, which is you know awesome. a, a prideful moment. I'm like, <laughs> bass fishing is new to me. I'm like, we didn't have like lakes like that. You know, go bass fishing. So right. we're like, you know, the newbies. Yeah. And so I gave him a good little Texas rig. I go, hey, here you go, bud. Go go at it. And he like, I got one. I'm like, think he caught like a little crappy or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh dang, you got a bass. I'm like, oh, there we go. He, he was pretty pumped. Last That's day awesome. of summer pulling in one. So That's awesome. So let me ask you this, bro. We're gonna go back. Yeah. Um, any like law enforcement in your family? How did you know you wanted to be a police officer? And don't See, you tell I, me? I, I'm the I'm the worst at that, man. I did I never wanted to be a cop. All right. I wanted to no, be I a fireman. That. Oh, geez. I wanted to be a fireman. My dad was a fireman, well, so I grew up in that. Now I can't talk. Turn the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in that field. You know, I, I grew up going to the station, doing you know ride alongs with him, getting to stay right. overnight like that. I mean, that was my passion. So out of high school, I kind of took some, you know, basic junior ed classes, went to their, like, fire program at Santa Ana Community College, mm -hmm. went through their academy, got all that, like, basic cert. So just like if you went to, like, the regional police academy and got your certification mm -hmm. and then applied, I did that. I uh, reserved for a couple of years, did oh, the well. EMT thing, did it all. And then, I mean, the hiring situation over there is pretty bad. So okay. made it all the way to the end to uh, LAFD. All the way then. Perfect candidate. Yeah. Had no reason to disqualify me. And I said, we can't hire you. Yeah. I'm like, what? I mean, it was like the biggest heartbreak. I mean, I yeah, I mean, just like to have that like life goal right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And not you're just not disqualified. They just have numbers. They have quotas. They have numbers. and Just out of spaces. No, nah, they just, what do they always say? What is the political answer they say? The diversity of the yeah, department must go. meet the diversity of the city. Uh, we had to gotcha. bring Nate on back in. We had to yeah, really meet. Right. So uh, that that uh, that kind of and so I was like heartbroken. I'm man. And then I I found out like me and my wife were gonna have my son. I'm like, great. I, I was you know waiting tables, bartending, you know, because right. that it was great money and I loved doing that. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm like I'm pathetic. Like I ain't got no real job. I got nothing. Right. Like what am I gonna do? And so, um, my background investigator for LAFD they use. LAPD, LAFD, the same background guys. So he's like, hey, man, he's like, you ever interested in going to LAPD? I'm like, be a cop? I'm like, I don't know, man. He's like, he goes, I can get you that job. He goes, you passed everything. Right. He goes, they're looking for warm bodies pretty much. And I said, okay. So he's like, just <laughs> you just got to go through all the steps, but just check the box and I'll expedite you as best I can. He's a really cool guy. Next um, time you came up on box you just said prefer not to say <laughs> <laughs> well believe it or not it didn't matter for LAP go figure right uh so on my birthday I went and took the written test and then I mean I really just I didn't put really much effort because I was just like whatever yeah. I'll do it make my wife happy you know just make it look like I'm but I still wanted the fire thing real bad of course, yeah. and it it worked out I mean I just took the test didn't study for anything didn't study for the oral interview <laughs> Because, like, with, for fire, I mean, I was studying for weeks, you know, right. finding good answers, finding good questions, doing, like, station visits, getting all the info you could right. every time you did an interview. Mm -hmm. And for the PD, I'm like, did they go, you do a station visit? Nope. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, did you do this? Nope. I'm just, I was just there. And, I mean, I always say, that, you know, the big man upstairs had a plan for me, and I just, and he spelled it out. So I became a cop, and I just kind of fell into it, and I love it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, it's it's different than what I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy it. I mean, you know, it's, it's what, been what good. What were you expecting? Like, like when you're, you have your, your mind set on being a firefighter and then all the, all the time, you know, on the couch and the video games and the, the eating <laughs> and, the, and the cooking. Oh man. I, oh, I lived that life, man. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was, you can work out, play basketball, yeah. you know, cook, <laughs> yeah. like ultimate brotherhood. And you're getting paid the whole Calendar time. Calendar shoots, the best part. Oh, they, they did do that. They did do that. And they have these recliners, man. They have these recliners and they call it the TV room. And they, right. those guys just nap, man. Yeah. They just, I mean, the busy station, they don't, but they sit back in that recliner. They throw on like Top Gun and Tombstone yeah. and all the classics. And they right. just, they just nap. 
I know, so. eventually we're going to have to have an FD guy on, and they're going to sit down and just slap the crap out of us and say, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Leave for all the, all the trash talking we do. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, well, they always say, well, they call them second responders. Yeah. I have my, <laughs> one of my good buddies. <laughs> yeah. They're second responders. That's what they are. I, uh, I, you know. I mean, yeah. My good buddy's a fireman, so we always we always poke and prod. But yeah. I mean, a lot of those guys, the ones that work at the busy station, they get their oh, butt yeah, kicked. They, yeah. they get their butt kicked. But yeah. the ones that are at a slow station, yeah. I mean, they're yeah. complaining because they have to get out of bed. It's right. like, oh, no, please. <laughs> I've got like four hours and I'm like messed up, you know, yeah. on the vampire schedule, and you're complaining that yeah. you got woken up from your nice comfy bed in 68 degrees. You yep. Know? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I just stumbled in it. So you're, you're wanting to do the fire department, or whatever. You're. You're looking at, hey, do you want to be a cop? What are your expectations of it at that time? I didn't really know any cops. So it was just I thought you were just giving people's tickets. And, you know, I, I grew up in a nice little area, so I didn't really see much. You know, I didn't see, like, the whole crime aspect so much. Mm -hmm. It's just whatever's on cops, you know, right. just whatever you see on TV. Oh, so I was just like, I had no idea. And I was just like, okay, I like, guess you're, like, pulling people over, giving tickets. You know, I didn't really understand the job too much. Yeah. So it was like a brand new world for me, which was kind of cool because yeah. you just kind of, you went into something not knowing anything. Right. And so I had kind of like a open perspective. So it was cool. I just didn't want to be, I just didn't want to be like one of those cops that always have bad reps. That was always my goal going in. I was like, I want to be a cop that just isn't that like, oh, that guy's, that guy's an uh, right. a-hole or, yeah, you know, sure. he's just like a yeah. ticket Nazi. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm like, you know, I, I grew up and then. You know, I lived a pretty normal life, you know, unsheltered. I'm like, I know, I know, like, the hard part's all about life, right? You yeah. know, kind of grew up with a single mom. So I'm like, man, like, I never want to give you know, a single mom a ticket, like, 400, right. 500 bucks. Like, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that hurts my wallet. And I mean, yeah. I can only imagine. So I never wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be, you know, empathetic and just, you know, I don't know, somebody that's, you, somebody can confide in and, you know, just be a good cop. Right. Uh, as best I could be. How is actually being a part of the profession and the experience so far uh, shaped or altered that, that goal or, or what your perception was going in? I mean, at first I just, I didn't really have, I was like, you know, I could still be a fireman, right? Do my two years oh, okay. or whatever. And that was, that was the, <laughs> the goal. Yeah. Well, they, they that was like what he kind of said is like, Hey, you, oh, okay. once you're hired with the city, you can always lateral over hmm. because you're, you're hired. So you're a number in, in the city system and they don't yeah. care. But then I That's just so was weird. like, I was enjoying it, man. I, I had really? the my FTO that I had. I mean, he was a officer Nelson, man, coolest dude. Yeah. I mean, he was generally like generally very passionate about the job, loved the job. I mean, he was a reserve officer and then became a patrol cop. And I mean, he was. I mean, he taught me some really good habits and and instilled some really good fundamental stuff for me. And I mean, he he changed my opinion. I had fun. Really? I had fun. And now I was like, you know, I enjoy this. I enjoy this and I, I liked it. I don't, I don't know if I want to change out of it. Yeah. I was like, I'll stick with it for a little bit. Good. <clears throat> so let me ask you this, Jazz. How did you pick GP? If you're way out in Cali, how did you hear about us? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. I mean, there's uh, numerous amounts of different things. Um, one of the big things is the pandemic, right? Um there's just a lot of chaos over there. Yeah. A lot of chaos. I mean, especially with the whole George Floyd, George Floyd riots, mm -hmm. man, that was wild. Yeah. Funnest time. One of the funnest times of my life. And I'm so glad I got to work that thing because I mean, growing, like growing up in LAPD, um, they always talked about the, you know, the, the Watts riots and all, right. all those different riots, you know, back in the day mm -hmm. we had that. Yeah. So you always heard those stories. And I mean, I lived that story. I mean, it's so cool. Uh, it was hard though. I mean, we had, um, I remember we were deployed one of the little times and we didn't like, somebody went to service food. Like the restaurant just closed. Like, we're not, we're not serving you guys. Dang. Yeah. I mean, we're working 16 hour days and we're right. not, well, I'm go home, pack lunch. Like we didn't have time for that. I literally went home, slept and woke up Yeah. and you know, we were starving. I'm like, man, I didn't get fed. And you're not working to keep your restaurant from being firebombed. No, I'm trying to keep you're, the city correct, together. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is some. Some shop just they saw all of us and they just closed the door and said, Nah, we're not we're not serving anymore. And it was just like the biggest snub. And I told my wife. Huh. And my wife's a little and she's a warrior man, so she's she's the ultimate cop wife. <laughs> so she got started, she raised thousands of dollars, used all local 
like good shops from our neighborhood, mm-hmm. yeah. got them to make sandwiches, different, just different things. And she delivered them all throughout the city. No kidding. Different stations, different where people were deployed and How just, cool and just did all of it. And, you know, she was just so mad. And she took to um, That's like so Facebook awesome and that stuff. she's so constructive because my wife would have just gone to that restaurant with a baseball <laughs> right. bat. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. And, you know, it was downtown L.A., so it's yeah. like, you know, I just blew it off. I'm like, whatever, right. yeah. and, you know, and you were, couldn't even use the restroom, so we're peeing in my dumpsters and stuff, which, yeah. you know, it's what it is. You just, that's, that's L.A. for you. Yeah. So she was, I mean, she's the ultimate. And she started, like, this little Facebook page, like the awesome. Thin Blue Line Wives, and, it was pretty cool. So she, I mean, she's definitely like one of my biggest supporters. So that was cool having a wife that, you know, you know, out of the goodness of her heart. Yeah. And it was kind of helpful because she wasn't really working with COVID. So oh, right. she was kind of like the courts were closed. Um, and so she was, she just had that. And she was, I mean, she did a lot. I mean, she was working, trying to balance all the things and order food to different parts of the city, go drive, pick it up, drop it off. So that was pretty cool. But um, back to your saying, I mean, it was just like the riots were one thing. I loved where I worked. The station I worked was cool. It was 77 division. I mean, it, it's, I mean, I take pride. It's the best division LAPD. What part definitely. Of that that? South Central. Okay. So, I mean, it's one so of there's those. There's a lot of you guys that are from there. Yeah. Well, me, uh, Joe, uh, Philip, we're all from, and then, um, Preciato. Okay. We're all from the same station. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. So there's a couple other guys that are from different And you all stations. knew each other while you were there? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, you know, I didn't want to leave that. You know, I want my kids are about to start school, and that whole school system is so messed up, man. Really? I mean, you can get into it and whatnot, but it's like, like mm-hmm. why, why are you teaching these elementary kids? Right. Teach them how to read. Yeah. Teach them how to spell. Teach them how to do math. Like, yeah. then, you know, when they get older and you're doing, like, you know, U.S. Yeah. history and yeah. they're doing all that stuff, yeah, oh, great. Teach them all that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> my kid doesn't even know that. Right. He needs to know how to spell his name. He needs to know how to do math. <laughs> and he knows he says the basics, man. Like, don't need to mix all that in. Um, so with that, and then, you know, we're we're very, like, make our own decisions. And then, you know, you got the government and the city telling you you're going to have to take this shot and do this stuff. Right, and yeah. We want to make our own without getting too deep in. We want to make our own educated decisions. Right. Like, you know, I had COVID twice. Right. I'm, I'm just like, well. If you have something, don't you have immunities? And I've had it twice. Like, yeah. why do I have to have that? And I'm like, I'm good. Like, well, too, even if it's something you want to do or you think is a good idea, like, I think a lot of us are naturally this way, but, like, don't tell me to do it. Yeah, exactly. And like, when you're telling me to do something, it's yeah. like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Time like, out. Oh, hey, I really want to do this. And KD comes along, hey, you should do this. Mm, yeah. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pushback is real, my yeah. brother. <laughs> so with that, you know, and we're, you know, we're a Christian family and, you know, we're, we're kind of like a nuclear family, right? We got me and my wife, my two kids, my dogs, you know, it's just like, right. you know, that dynamic's not very liked over there, yeah. you know, and it's kind of a threat. And I'm like, you know, being conservative over there, Christian, you know, having all these values, you're, you're, you're an outcast. I was I mean, going to say you're different. I mean, my wife lost a lot of friends during that whole George Floyd thing. Like best friends, so that was hard because you're a cop. Because I'm a cop, and she supported me. Yeah, they just thought they just thought I was a bad dude. They okay. knew me. It's, it's just it's crazy. If you can look at one group of people and go, yeah, all y'all are the same. I hate all y'all. You, please. Well, that's what we said. Like you know me. You yeah. know me as a friend, as a person. And then yeah. I'm the same way when I'm a cop. Like right. But just because something on the news now, I'm a bad dude. Like that's just that's wild, man. The, yeah. well, the, the thing that pisses me off when I was, I've got into it with some people before, but when I always tell people is the, the same stupidity that drives people to uh, say, like you look at 90s TV programming, like what percentage of, of African-American males were represented as gang members, drug dealers, that sort of thing. And uh-huh. that, that stereotype got propagated over and over and over. And then your average person looked at it and said, hey, that they pass a, a black male on the street and then they clutched their purse or they, yeah, whatever. No, it's, it's like it's... you're exhibiting the exact same mentality <laughs> And looking, hey, this person who has nothing to do with this person, and 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 that's making crazy. this connection, it just doesn't exist. It just it, it infuriates me. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's all that. I mean, it's all that, and then you Sorry. know, it's just it's it's like a rat race, man. I mean, it's hard to get ahead living over there. Really? Hard to get ahead. I mean, we li- we bought a 1960s built house. How big I mean, was original. It? How big was it? Thirteen hundred square foot. Ooh, how much did you pay? Oh, and back then, like in the in the sixes back then, six hundreds. Yeah. Jesus. I think we paid that, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the high 600s, yeah. 
And that was that yeah. was original. Like I replaced the whole floors, all the doors. Like it was, it was rough shape. And we got a deal. We got a deal. Yeah, I mean it was. Yeah, it was. I mean that was like a. You're paying for dirt in California. You're paying for dirt. That's all you're paying for. Golly, dude! If I give you a check with that starts with four, and has more than what three zeros on the end of it, it better be ready to go. More than four zeros. Man, no, but so it was, I mean, it was a great house. I mean, it was, yeah. it was for us, it was cool. And we thought it would kind of be like the forever house. We bought in a good school district. We bought in Cypress, California, which is good school district, not far from the beach. It was just oh, really cool. centralized. So that was cool. And then, um, you know, it was just hard. I mean, we were, we were, that was tight on the finances mm-hmm. living in that house. Bet, yeah. And we, that was like, we had to do a lot of work to it. And I like to say I'm pretty handy. So I was able to do most of it myself. Um, so it was just all that. And then I was like, you know what? I'm done. I want to move to Texas. I've always wanted to move to Texas. I what, actually, what, what set your sights on <laughs> Texas specifically? I don't know. Let's see. Um, it's technically the South, right? So my, my grandparents were from the South. My grandma's from Georgia. My grandpa's from Alabama. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in that kind of environment. Mm-hmm. You know, that good home cooking. My grandma, she was, she yeah. was good. Everything had a stick of butter in it, but man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. she was some she, of the best cook. Real. And yes, so, yeah. you know, I, I grew up that way. And I was like, you know what? And I want to live in a red state. I don't want to yeah. live in a blue state. I want to be one of the just where I'm just, oh, yeah, that's, that's normal. You go to church. Everybody goes to church. Or, yeah. you know, you believe in this. You believe in that. Like, okay. You support cops? Hell, heck yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, nothing, I mean it's, it's wild being over here and people are, like, thankful. It's like, wait, what? You, yeah. Is this, is this for real? I mean, I'm used to it now, but yeah, for a while you're like, you know, holy cow, like, Are this you is joking? yeah, this is cool. Like, I I would never told my neighbors I was a cop. Never told anybody I was, right? Because yeah. you just didn't want that, you know. Especially after the whole, you know, even 2015, those those little riots mm-hmm. on, and that's when I started. Is 2015? You didn't right. want people to know, and I told my neighbors, and they're like, oh, we're so happy, we're so thankful. You know, they're always like, is there anything you need? Let me know. If you've been busy at work, I'll come cut your lawn. You know. Whatever, like they're oh yeah, they they love the fact that I'm on their street. So I was like, man, this is cool. Yeah. And you know, I just you know the whole environment of living in Texas is great. You know, yeah. proud to be a Texan, and you know, taking pride in in your one your state and then in your country. Like yeah. I wanted all that. Yeah. And then it was actually really good for my wife's job and my job. She's a court reporter, so a stenographer. Yeah. Oh okay. So it, you know, the Metroplex is. You know, it's big, so there's right. a lot of opportunity for her. So it just fit the bill for both of us. Um, and, we, you know, we wanted a good school district, so we found a good school district. Mm-hmm. I mean, our kids, just they thrive, man. It's just, awesome. They love it. So yeah. uh, when I was looking, we decided on Texas because we did the whole Arizona, Idaho, Tennessee, and it Idaho. was like. Yeah, how did Idaho even yeah, make the know, list? I don't know. That was just that was one of those places that like was drawing people that were thinking about leaving. They're drawing their attention. I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, huh. Boise, Boise's up there. Yeah, just up yeah, there, like city. that whole area. So you know that one was checked off real quick. It's too small. Yeah. And then Arizona's hot. I mean, there's no way I'm being a cop in Arizona. You know, <laughs> 120 degrees, 118. Yeah. Like it's hot here, but it's manageable. I mean, right. it's no big deal. But that's that's too hot. Yeah. I'm not doing that. And so and then we looked at Tennessee. Tennessee didn't have that many options for us work-wise. And so, okay, Dallas, Dallas area. You know, I'm not moving to Austin. Heck yeah. no. Like, I'm not – I already made that mistake once. I'm so not doing that be, again. Yeah. Uh, and then Houston's very humid. Dude. And that department's a mess. Right. Well, not so much department, but that city's a mess too yeah. sometimes. And I'm like, police-wise, I'm like, oh, I don't – I want to I want to chill. Like, I, right. I did the yeah. whole – like, I've, I've seen a lot of things working where I worked. And so I want to just, you know, enjoy my job a little bit more. So, I, and you've had Massey on here before. So, mm-hmm. um, he happened. I, I met him, but it was me, um, Joe, and Philip. We were all at the same station, and we were all just looking at this. Mm-hmm. So, we just looked at every opportunity in the Metroplex, whoever was hiring. Mm-hmm. I think I tested for McKinney. I tested for Flower Mound. I tested for Frisco, Plano, like all, all the ones that, you know, salary wise would kind of match what I was making. So, I didn't right. have to take like a big pay cut. And that's where I actually met Massey was um, – I, mean, I never knew him before because he worked at a different station than we talked about. Like, I don't know this guy. Right. So we were randomly doing the testing part. And, you know, this L.A. guys, LAPD guys, we just always – we can just find each other. It's funny. Yeah. So I found them and, you know – Usually the sunglasses. Uh, yeah. They all wear, like, these big, blocky, Gucci-type sunglasses. See, well, I, can't, I got big nose, so there's not very many <laughs> sunglasses that fit me. Like, I can't wear those standard Oakley gas yeah. can. It looks like <laughs> – it looks, it looks dumb. So – 
Uh, I never could do that type of thing. But so I met him there and we did the whole test and stuff like that. And then we kind of stayed in contact. The Grand Prairie test? No, the McKinney test. Oh, okay. And then he was like, oh, yeah, I got this test in Grand Prairie. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, Grand Prairie. It's another one of those places. I'm like, all right. And then I ran it. I talked to Joe. Joe was like, oh, I'm taking that test. I'm like, what? So I logged on real quick to see if I could, you know, book a quick flight, right. you know. <laughs> and I missed the cutoff date. But I didn't know, you know, hindsight's always 2020. You guys would have just let me test on that day. So I could have just showed up. And I'm like, so I missed that one. And I would have been their class, hopefully. Oh, dang. So I missed that. And I looked in. I'm like, man, this is the only department that offers, like, a legit lateral program. Oh, really? I mean, you got you guys back then at least. You guys yeah. were the only ones. Yeah. Everywhere I mean, else, when I when I came on at sixteen, yeah, yeah. Everywhere else, I mean, being a you know a transplant yeah. Cali kid, like it was, you, it would made it really hard. You're starting at the bottom. Oh yeah, that's true. So yeah. it was like you, you know, they give you a little bit, but it was like if you're not T cool certified, like, you're not lateral to them. And huh. they were like willing, like oh we'll we'll ad- we'll we'll see, like we'll advise you on how much you can wave and what you can't wave. Right. So I was like, okay. So I looked into it, and that's and I was like, that's great. I mean, the pay was pretty good. It's even better now, but yeah, pay was good. I can lateral. I can get my my hour, like my years. Mm-hmm. I can get all that accredited, and like right. I'm not starting at the bottom. I mean, I'm starting seniority wise, which is sure. kind of a bummer, but everything else it fit pretty well. But even that, like starting like night day where you work, that's the best place to get to know the city. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I mean, I I love the shift. I mean, I I was on FTO. I was on that shift. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna stay here. Yeah, same. I like the supervision. I liked my lieutenant. Yep. You know, and it just and they took care of me. And I was like, you know, I, like, anybody takes care of me, you know, you got to have that loyalty. Yeah. So I've stuck, I've stuck the whole time. You know, the whole days when days comes available, I don't know how my loyalty would be, but <laughs> I don't know, man. He's gonna jump because loyalty did, is oh, to mama man. at home. Oh yeah. I did six months on days, and uh, I told told the wife, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll try it out. Did six months on days. Uh, granted, I did it on the B side. And everything's completely different now. The personnel's all changed. Yeah. The retirements and whatnot. But it's six months, and I got right back on night day. I was like, no, <laughs> I, I belong. I belong on night day. Oh, man, the sleep. The sleep's hard. Sleep's yeah. hard, especially the little ones. Yeah. That's hard. Um, Dude, it was awesome for me. I didn't realize how much kids cried at night specifically because I was always gone. Yeah. And then oh. now that I'm a detective and I have nights off and I have a, a younger kid, and he's mm-hmm. crying, and I was talking to my wife, and I was like, are all of them this loud, or is it just like he's just pissed <laughs> all the time? She's and it clicked. She's like, "You've never been home at night. Yeah, like, you you've go. always been asleep with during the day. You've been home. You missed all this." And yeah, I was so like, get your butt up. Yeah, like that's why I wanted to have so many. I didn't realize they're such a pain in the ass in the beginning. <laughs> oh yeah, like, all they want is mom too. Dude, yeah, no, no, no. You, you you can't feed them. Yeah, all you can do is pretty much change their diaper and hold. Dude, them. That's it. Yeah. yeah. You tell that to my wife because she does not believe that. She's always like, like, oh, he, yeah, I can't help him right now either. But blah, blah, blah. like, you just, just hold him. And it's like, well, the best is wants, like, he wants you. Well, then my wife would feed him, and then cha- like I'd change him, right? And then you know, even my daughter too. It's like, and then, then they're good, mm-hmm. and then they'll they'll sleep or something like that. But all they really want is mom. Well, they don't even want to sleep with me because like the, my youngest right now, he because if I'm hanging out with him, he knows it's playtime. So he doesn't matter how tired he is, he is oh, not going. Okay. He's not going to sleep with me because he's like, nah. Like throw me or you know toss me on the couch or something like we're not this is not sit down if you're holding. Oh me. yeah, no we had we had uh, my wife's very she's a good mom so she was just very hands on. Yeah. I mean the kids are still mama's kids because oh, yeah. I mean she you know she did the whole thing where they they slept in our like co sleep and stuff like that mm-hmm. so you know they they love mom they my daughter's really funny because she'll when work at nights mm-hmm. she goes and sleeps on my side of the bed right yeah and she'll say i, I kept your side of the bed warm dad <laughs> i'm all things babe you know i just come home from work and she's like yeah. passed out i'm like oh man i just want to get into bed so right. i don't want to wake her up and so uh, but yeah she always like that's like her other thing is, that's, that's at work i'm gonna sleep in i'm gonna sleep in the bed that's nice though yeah yeah well let me ask you this so do you think that the kids worry now that you are here even though you do the same work that you did in Canada. I don't think they ever really worry. Yeah. Um, they're too young, you know. They're 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 both, you know, kindergarten, oh, okay. second grade, so they don't really understand. Yeah. Um, you know, they always ask, "Oh, did you did you arrest somebody today?" You know, I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. They're like, "Oh, so what, what happened?" And you know, you, you got sometimes, well, especially in LA, you got to you got to water you're, things you're down thinking a little about bit. The stabbing you respond to, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, just little things like that. But you know, they're they love it. You know, they always. They're good kids about it, and they they understand a lot. Like you know, missing stuff. They're like, oh, it's okay. I know you got to work, Dad. Yeah, I know you got to protect people. All right, cool. So, but you know, they don't worry. My wife, she likes it here because she doesn't worry as much. Really? 
Oh yeah, she used yeah. to you know, worry ward over there. I mean, it's, it's it's different. Different environment, yeah. You know, we dealt with you know dealt with gangsters. We dealt with you know a lot of you're going to homicide, stabbings, chasing people. You're just a lot more like watching your back all the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it could happen here, but it's yeah. just the chances are way lower. Well, and what I found was the environment is so much different. Like where I worked originally, if if an officer was fighting with someone alone, that officer was going to be fighting with that person alone probably plus a bunch of other people too. Whereas there's some differences geographically mm-hmm. here. There's, there's, there's some exceptions, but by and large, like if you're, if you're an Epic or whatever, and you get in a, a foot chase or a fight with somebody, which, which happens like, and you're by yourself and you get in a bad spot, there's a real good chance somebody's going to uh, come help you. Oh yeah. I mean, that, that's, and I like that. And that's, I mean, you know, so I really like this department and, it's, yeah. and that's how we were in LA. Yeah. I mean, we called it a backup. And I mean, you're everybody, right. Everybody's raining down, yeah. and I mean, you. A lot of those guys gave up immediately because they knew. I mean, you're, you know, they always called LA. <laughs> there's, there is some truth to that, yeah. right? Because you know, we're, we're gonna take care of each other. Yeah. And you, you know, it's, it's like a brotherhood. You, know, you mess with them, like, yeah. you're getting my full force. Like, you're getting everything. Yeah. So, and that, and that is how it is here. I mean, it's like funny because they gotta like, hey, stop, don't, no, no, not only so many people because everybody starts going. Oh, and right. It's great, yeah. you know, and, and it's. I don't, I don't think there's ever been a time when there's not somebody right there. Yeah. You know, so it's nice having that here too. We had a, a guy uh, not too terribly long ago getting a, um, he was off duty. He went up getting a car chase and then a foot chase with somebody. It was a, I don't know what the, what the offense was. It was a pretty serious charge. It was, it was something that he was helping out. Basically, he saw it happen. He's having to help out another agency. And it wound up being a, a civilian, I believe, saw him like at the end of the, the chase fighting with the person that went up helping him uh, get him in custody. See, it's, that's cool. Yeah. LA, you'd have phones on you watching you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, it's awesome. Um, so, so, she likes your wife is enjoying having you here. How does she actually like being here? She loves it. I yeah. mean, you know, just like where we moved, we moved into like a master plan community. So, she's just, she's got all these friends. She's got all these friends. She's very busy. Um, you know, with the school being, I mean, I can see the school from my front door. That's awesome. So, yeah. just the, the <laughs> amount of community, like, you know, just everybody helping each other out and mm-hmm. doing stuff is huge. So that's been huge for her. And, you know, we've, we've dragged, we dragged my in-laws Did to you Texas. Really? Oh yeah. Uh, we've dragged awesome. some of our best friends now, which is pretty cool. We the dragged them down. Prices are your fault. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, it was chaotic when I first got here. It was just when it was, you know, getting crazy. Mm-hmm. The home prices weren't that high. We put an offer on the house. Like, Oh, somebody outbid you. I'm yeah. like, okay. How much? Yeah. Oh, 50 grand. I'm like, 50 grand? <laughs> yeah. Like, no way. And so, yeah, it was just, it was fighting, fighting to get a house. And we finally got a house. And, you know, now it's worth what we paid. But initially, yeah. we were kind of overpaying. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah. we just needed in. I'm like, we. I start, have to have I start work. The kids need to start school. Like, we got to get them registered. Like, like, it is what it is. Like, so, and now, I mean, like, we were just joking earlier. Like, I, I can't even afford my own house if I sell it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, and the interest rates is the big thing. But, yeah. You know, I got in in that three percent era, which is huge. Yeah, Same. I mean that. I mean, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> yeah, that's like we can't. I can't even move. Can you give yeah. that up? Like Same. no way. Uh, so yeah, I mean, just everything, and it's been good for like work is easy for her. For me, she does a lot of Zoom stuff, so she can just be at home, which is nice. She can just work at home, and then you know the kids are right there, and doesn't right. have to like commute. Um, but yeah, I mean, the whole family is just really acclimated and really well. Like they don't know any different. Yeah. How, how fast did y'all change those license plates? Oh, I did that real quick. Immediately. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty savvy on that stuff, so I was like, look, what I got to do? I, I mean, I yeah. think it was like the second, second, third day, and it was gone. <laughs> Driver's license, right. license oh, yeah. plates. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we made the appointment because we knew we were going to move. Like, mm-hmm. we didn't have a house yet, but we made the appointment like months of ahead of time. I was like, I got to get a lot rid of this driver's yeah. license, too. <laughs> Everything. I got pulled over one time. And, you know, of course, I'm in the California place. And he's like, oh, I just, you're from here. And I, I showed him my, I sold my LAPD stuff. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, you're, you're good. Yeah. Like, oh, God, <laughs> I don't know, because some of these roads, like, you know, where I'm at, they're at the edge of the Metroplex. You don't see the speed limit sometimes. Yeah. Like, How fast do I go? It's a wide open road. There's no yeah. traffic? Oh, I'm flying. <laughs> it's no speed limit. It's a feeling kind of thing. Yeah, that's why I felt like going the right speed. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's been good. It's been good. And the department's been good. I love it here. So you know. now that you're here, do you do you have any specific plans or, or aspirations for where you want to go on this department? Yeah, I'd like to say so. Uh, I, I've I've done pretty good so far. I mean, I made FTO like within a year. 
oh, which cool. is pretty cool. How do you, uh, how do you enjoy that? I like it a lot. You know, just especially training laterals. Because yeah. I, I know as a lateral, I knew kind of just that thing. And it was tough, you know. Yeah. And you're getting trained by guys that have less time on. And, yeah. you know, try to be humble about seeing half the things you've seen or not even some of the things you've seen. So it's kind of hard. Yeah. And, you know, and they're trying to show you. And I'm like, okay, well, what the heck? Like, they're getting on you and know, stuff. It's just different culture, you know. Yeah. We, we didn't do proactive policing as much as they did here. Right. You know, it's a lot of reactive. Yeah. Right? You're just handle that radio and then you know in between you can stop a pimp or stop a gangster kind of get in a little bit of work or try to find a stolen car like but it's limited right right and here it's like that's it's a lot of drive to find that and it's, it's just a different concept for us right um a lot of those la guys you know to get used to um but kind of like doing the fto thing so i can kind of understand those guys mm. kind of understand where they're coming from kind of relate to them a little bit and, and know that, you know, they're not here to like learn how to be a cop. Right. They'll learn the Grand Prairie way mm -hmm. and they'll learn to make friends. You know, they, yeah. they want to fit in. And I know that cause I, that's cut I, what I wanted. I mean, luckily I had my LA guys, you know, and everybody thought we were a little click here, but it's just like, that's who you know. Yeah, you are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I heard it plenty of times. Yeah. You LA guys. I'm like, oh, Hey man, <laughs> we know each other. Like, you know, it's yeah. just, it's like buddies, For you sure. know, and, you, and yeah. you can bounce things like, Hey, did you have this problem? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we have a little thread, and we just go, like, how do you fix this? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what's this? I have no idea. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, you know, certain terms that you yeah. use here differently. So, you know, we had that that partnership, you know, kind of was looked differently upon other people. Like, what are you guys doing? Hey, this is all we know is each it other. Was, yeah, it's the um, same thing for us. But, yeah, I've been enjoying that. Um, I went for a couple spots, you know, detective spots, because okay. that's, that's my next big aspiration. Okay. I did did patrol. I did you know six years LA patrol the whole time. Right. I've done two here, and I, I like to say I kind of got a gist of the patrol thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'd like to learn the detective side, the actual like investigative side. Right. Have that in my tool belt. You know, my, any of them kind of stand out to you more than others? Uh, well, I I, I went for major crimes. Oh, did you? And, yeah, my my buddy Massey yeah. stole that spot for me. You know, so it is what it is. Um, Man, I didn't. <laughs> but see, that's all the stuff that I used to deal with, like that yeah. big stuff. So that that yeah. automatically was a draw for me. I'm like, and you guys handle the shootings, you guys handle like the stabbings, you guys handle all the big stuff. Like that's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, that one and no, you it's know. definitely the the epitome of being yeah. a, a detective, if you will. Oh yeah. But man, their their call out schedule and their workload is it's significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but you, know. you also got young kids, so yeah. that that would if you're going to do it, it would definitely be the time to time to do it. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, the on call is not that bad. I, I don't think. Yeah, anything that that's not nice is pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, so that and I like, um, you know, property is pretty cool. Property and autos. Mm -hmm. Cause property, I mean, it's, it's all those people that are just stealing. Yeah. Stealing and taking people's stuff like that drives me nuts. Like, right, you know, <laughs> like, you work. I, mean, I work hard for my money, and so yeah. do all those people. And you're just going to come in and steal. I mean, yeah. you know, even if it's Walmart, you know, they just right. get stolen. But nonetheless, it's like you know, it's just like you have the audacity to go in there and just steal. It's like, oh, it's crazy. So I know sometimes it's like, it's a lot of work, you know, just a lot of paperwork in that table, but you know, it's, you learn a lot of stuff. Yep. Um, so I like that one autos, you know, stolen yeah. cars, man. That's, that's yeah. like the cream of the crop. That's, that was always what we looked for in LA. Really? Because you know, at half the time it's pursuit and then right, half yeah. the time, you know, and, and you know what, I've gotten more satisfaction of finding that somebody's stolen car than any other report. Really? I mean, people are genuinely so thankful. A lot of people that are hardworking people that got their car stolen, mm -hmm. that's like their only way to get their kids to school. Yeah. They shared yeah. the car and, you know, and you gave them, them back and they're just, I mean, they're beyond the moon. Just like, thank yeah. you so much. And I'm like, you know, that just, damn, it's no big deal. Good but job, yeah. so, you know, I like that part and it's pretty cool. And the, some of this ECM theft is pretty intriguing here. How they just steal those uh, Dodges and all those oh, different yeah, yeah. cars so mm -hmm. easily. I mean, yeah. that's pretty cool. I mean, I mean, Don't it isn't it. cool that they get the car stolen, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. It, it, the whole like you know the theft thing is just like you know like these guys are really like just stealing cars left and right, and it's just they do not care, and that's a lot of money. I mean, if, and you know for people that are out that, I mean, yeah. they're stealing cars that are somewhat new. It's not like you know we do the little Honda Accord or old Chevy Silverado. It's like okay, like you're out like five grand or something like that. Like, I mean, these are people work well, hard like, for these depending cars. Depending on what kind of car it is, like the Dodges, for instance, getting discontinued. Like I, I've got a, had a couple of guys where you know the cars are almost getting stolen. They they go and purchase a garage or rent a garage in their apartment complex to keep it in. Yeah, whoever it is is watching them and is oh, yeah. trying to get into the garage to get the car. It's 
Absolutely. That's crazy. Insane. So, I mean, I those those guys, they can work a lot and do a lot of cool stuff. So that's cool. I yeah. mean, that's just a little more undercover. Um, so that's that's my next big move. My, I, you know, I kind of want to promote. I want to. Yeah. I want to be towards the top. You know, I just I like taking care of taking care of guys. Like you know, yeah. hey, this, these are this is this is your family. Right. You know, helping them out, getting what they want. Like I'm not into politics, and so I feel like I would I'd be a good asset up there because. You know, I'm not not looking to be make people happy except for my troops, right. and so that that's my draw is to is to promote. Yeah. So trying to get all those Good. all those little tools in my belt so that you know when that time arrives, you know I can I can put in for it. Well, it's coming, my brother. Yeah. Well, I just I just missed this last sergeant, sergeant test by a little bit. Yeah. My oh. lieutenant was like, "Why are you putting in for it?" Like, oh, you didn't have the time. I need yeah. four more months. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Give me four more months and I'm good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just you know. I'd like to, I want to always keep learning. Yeah. Get that next chapter and, you know, just. Plus the good thing with this job is if, it, if you're not learning, you're pretty much trying not to learn because no matter True. where you are, you're going <laughs> to oh, be learning yeah. something. Oh, my, they, everybody gives me a hard time. Like, oh, I saw you on this training order. I'm like, well, it's training, right? I'll put in for it. Like, hey, yep. does, yep. I want to learn a little Absolutely. more. Absolutely. You know, it's the only way to get better, bro. So it, I've been, this last year was pretty good training wise. I mean, I got a lot of training. I mean, it was almost a thing like, hey, you know, Give somebody else a chance. Like, sure. Okay, yeah. I'd rather that be the circumstance than you know something like that. And I wanted to get all my my certifications, you know, the intermediate, right. advanced mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I got one last training, and then I get my intermediate, advanced at the same time. So yeah, I have a training I need to do as well, but it involves getting bit by a dog. I don't want to do. You it. guys didn't do that in the academy? Yeah, I did, and I want, it wasn't on the roster. Oh man, yeah. You don't want to be bit by tank. Tank hurts. I know. Yeah, like he broke our skin through the suit. Like, not like you're not bleeding, but it like, I mean, you had like, like almost like a scratch. I mean, I don't need, need my masters. I'm just sticking with it. Hey, that, <laughs> hey, that, that <laughs> gives need, me a, I when you put nothing. in for sergeant with me, then we'll be in the same boat. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need nothing that involves a dog bite. <laughs> like, nah, I'll pass. Man, that was, that was wild doing uh, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like sitting in that corner and you know, and you're like, oh, hate it. And they're like, and you're like thinking, just don't bite my leg, don't bite anything else, bite my arm. And you're like trying to put the arm out there, and you're like flinching. Like, See, gets the arm out of the leg, bites the leg. When oh. I was hiding, I was thinking, please just don't let this piss go through the suit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's that. I mean, I was sweating. I was sweating. Oh, I was yeah. sweating. And, you know, you're changing scared. out this suit, and everybody's yeah. all sweating. I'm like, this is yeah. gross, man. Yeah. See, it wasn't sweating. And, and I don't know. I don't know what happened. It's probably sometimes like administrative paperwork stuff happens, but. Of all the rosters or whatever they could have lost that had my name on it, oh. that was the one. God. You just jump on one of those academy ones and just kind of blend do. in real quick. Yeah, see if I can just yeah. skip the line. Yeah, for the dog bite part. There you go. Well, I think we're gonna wrap up um, before we do. Uh, let me interject. So we do have a civil service test coming up September sixteenth. Mm. So mm-hmm. get online, get that filled out. Also, we can't forget. So we need good dispatchers, uh, and we need some great detention staff members. Uh, I think the pay is also online, so if you have questions, go online, look it up, fill out those apps, come in. Sometimes you can almost do, quote, unquote, a ride-along, like, you know, mm-hmm. shadow them and see what they do. Um, but we definitely uh, need those, so check yep. them out. On that note, um, well, my last question is talking to other guys, be it lateral or, or not, mm-hmm. uh, but I guess specifically guys who are looking at Potentially coming from from out of state, what would you have to say to them as far as advice or, or things to, to expect or whatever? My always my thing I tell people when they're looking like do it for the right reasons. Don't don't chase the money, mm-hmm. don't chase that. Find an apartment that that fits you, right? If you're just chasing that, you're, you're not going to be happy, right? And that's why I love it here. I mean, the, the the family culture, you know, we've got a lot of stuff, and I mean, the fluidity of arresting somebody, report writing, all that Holy is huge. Crap, dude. Uh, nothing like working for a department does that. And that's that's part of the reason why I chose. That's why doing ride-alongs is great because you kind of see it. I mean, yeah. if I would have done a ride-along, my mind would have been blown. Right. You know, you know I'm, I'm from the age of the dinosaurs and LAPD, yeah. you know, pen and paper. And, you know, <laughs> here it's just like your leaps ahead. So I always tell guys, like, do it for the right reason. Do the right fit. You know, I think Grand Prairie's got, you know, top-notch offers. Yeah. Not saying that it's right for everybody. Um, but it's not, no. And there's, that's what I always tell people explore, like, like you said, find your department, because like you're talking about coming from an agency where it's, you're, you're radio driven, you know, you come to to an agency like us where it's like, Hey, you're going to have part of your shift is going to be that. But then the other part, 
So no, get out there, so, make something happen. Find these people. Yeah, who are, especially before if, they commit crimes. If you're gonna do a ride along, ask to, like you're a lateral, like mm-hmm. ask to ride along with the lateral. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, we're we're all. I mean, if I don't have a trainee, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Half the time they're like, hey, "We need somebody." I'm like, "Got a trainee?" I'm like, "I can't volunteer." They're like, "Well, why aren't you volunteering?" I'm like, "I got a trainee." Like, hey, right. Yeah. Put three in the car. Another you know. Right yeah. So I mean, that's always the big thing is ride along, check it out, get a good feel for it because you chase the money, it's not right for you. Now, now we're up there, which is cool because yeah. you know, for a lot of guys, that's the hard part. They talk about, like, "Oh, how's the pay?" Yep. And you know. Being up there now is great because, you know, there's a lot of guys where it's like, oh, that's definitely doable. Yeah. You know, the lateral program and, and the whole T-Cole thing. I mean, that's that's huge. I mean, yeah. you're really supported here through that whole process. Right. Because it's a lot of unknown. I don't know. I don't know anything about Texas. And I'm coming here and, <laughs> you know, the whole process, they help you out. Um, and I like it that, you know, you're – they're in it to help you, like, like succeed. Right. Right. So – that's always tell guys. I mean, I, I send stuff to LA guys all the time. They're always scared, though. You know. The, yeah. But there's been a couple. They've worked for other departments, and it, it's worked out for them. Yeah. Um, a lot of the ones you know come here, and they're just like, "Wow, the minds are blown." Yeah. You know? But it is different, different type of work. So you just gotta do it for the right reasons. Yes, sir. I will say, if you do it right along, um, don't let. How's the money? Be one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, me personally, that's my pet peeve, man. No. I'm talking to somebody like. <laughs> Maybe you're a little bit different, but me, yeah. I'm just like, nah. I because don't. at the end of the day, that's why we all do it, though. So it's okay well, if, yeah, you, if okay. you you can ask general questions like, you know, is the pay good? And I'm going to tell you, yes. Yeah. Some people are specific, like, how much do you make? Bro, look, we got officers that make over 130 uh, you can do it as an officer. You can go make a, if but you if want to. If you're in here to make money, you ain't in the right job. Well, <laughs> you're not going to get rich that's, being that's a cop. Right. True, yeah. but no, and that's yeah. what I, I back it up with that statement. Like, look, but if you're chasing a dollar, yeah, you're going to be unhappy because, yeah, yeah, you can go somewhere and make a lot of money, and then it doesn't fit your family life, your values, and then you're just going to be pissed off all the time. When you still got a reason to be willing to, to get hurt or potentially killed when you put on that vest and mm-hmm. that badge. And, oh, yeah. Uh, money sounds good, but at the end of the yeah. day, it's not the reason to do it. Yeah, no, not at all. Not so. at all. All right. Well, not that positive note. I know, right? <laughs> Go ahead and get <laughs> off here. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, you, man. Appreciate yeah, it, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming down and uh, bringing, bringing your experience with you. Of and, course. Uh, of course. Happy to be here. Appreciate everybody listening. All right. Till next time. Till next time. Yeah, I, I talked to a uh, man. So I used to work for like a mortgage company. And this lady called me from California and she was crying.